Welcome to day one. I'm Bill Turpy. Have you had your wake up call from God? Those wake up calls can be jarring and transforming. Stay with us as we explore from scripture and personal experience wake up calls from God. This concept, a wake-up call from God, is it valid? Are there wake-up calls from God? I think we have to be awfully careful when we talk about wake-up calls from God. How do we know that this wake-up call is, in fact, from God? And that's, that, that's my... Because when, it when comes hear, in a booming voice. Well, you know? when I hear people talk about <laughs> knowing for sure the will of God in their lives, I get real nervous. Because how do we ever know for sure that the wake-up call or that that will is in fact God. My first reaction to wake-up call from God is I'm frightened because there's an element of Christianity that talks about wake-up calls as being this kind of cataclysmic, almost punishing event that you will endure in which God zaps you with lightning to get your attention. And I'm just not a believer that God creates abusive situations in order to get our attention. I believe the world creates plenty of abusive situations but a lot for of us. People believe that. They absolutely do. But for me, theologically, that doesn't work. Now, I do believe that God takes sometimes an abusive situation and transforms it. I do not believe that God put the two criminals on either side of Jesus on their crosses. I do believe that God took that moment in their lives and gave them an opportunity to have a transformative event. Those were wake-up calls in some sense. Absolutely. And one took it and one didn't. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking when you were mentioning that, I thought about Christ being on the cross and how much of a wake-up call that was for the disciples because it was in that moment that they were, per well, they felt that they were being permanently estranged from God and that even though he had talked about um, eternal life and resurrection and coming back, in that moment, they did not see that being actualized. And of course, it wasn't until later on that they de did see that and witnessed that. But in that moment, that was they were definitely having a struggle between the reality of here was this person in the name of Jesus who had walked and talked and, and been our brother and been our leader and our guide for all of these years. And now all of a sudden, he's on a cross between two thieves and is leaving us. Where is the hope? Where's that eschatological, eschatological hope in all of that? But there's also that fear. I remember a, a member asking me after um, uh, Transfiguration Sunday, well, Pastor, what is the Transfiguration? <laughs> and I was stumped because one of the things that I wanted to try and express was um, the surprise of an event, the surprise that, that uh, Peter, James, and John would have had that Jesus understood that they needed an event. They needed something to crash in and to be something different to happen for them. So was well, that a wake-up call for those disciples? It, I think it was. I Jesus think, comes, is take, goes up to the mountain. He takes up to the mountain. The cloud comes around them, and, and they hear the voice of God. And suddenly, whatever was tiring them out, whatever was, was keeping them down, whatever was oppressing them, I hope in that moment was released. And I hope that's the beauty of the transfiguration event, that, that God breaks in sometimes and does something to turn us around. And the example we have, of course, is, is God doing that. With yeah, but, Dan, but dancing, no, I don't, think, I don't see God like working it. that way. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think I'm more of that idea that the wake-up call comes. I, I'm well, have you had wake-up calls? Well, I want to go back for a second. I think to discern between these two positions, it's helpful to go back to Deborah's comment. That the question is, is it God? I mean, yeah, yes, God it does it, but is it always God? No. And when people come to me and said, you know, well, I think God is, you know, kind of shaking me and saying this, I, I told him, use the Ebenezer Scrooge test. And if you remember, you remember Scrooge, when Marley, when Marley first shows up, you know, Scrooge actually doubts it a little bit. He, he says, well, is this just me? Is this just my desires? Is this just my stomach grumbling? Is it a blot of undigested <laughs> mustard? Make sure it's not indigestion first. <laughs> um, and then be quiet and listen. And that's what takes me... Um, to the Old Testament story of the call of Samuel. Samuel is actually asleep when he thinks he hears somebody calling, and he goes to Eli, yeah. and he says, you know, did you call me? Somebody, somebody, somebody called me. me. Was it you, Eli? And Eli says, no, go back to bed. You know, it wasn't me. And then he does it, that repeats for three times, and then finally Eli's like, 
this might be God, go back and say, yes, Lord, um, what do you have to say to me? And um, I think that's, that's the thing to do in these, in these situations. I don't think uh, God is abusive, but I think God does break in. There's dozens of hotel chains around the country that believe in wake-up calls. You know? <laughs> I mean, this is fun. I've, I've had wake-up calls. Most of my wake-up calls, though, I am not aware they're in a wake-up call at the moment. So w long before I ever decided I want to go into the ministry, I was wrestling with what I wanted to do with my life. I was working in a mental institution. One of the chaplains who was there was having a discussion with me. He asked me about the ministry. I said, well, you know, my father's a ministry, minister, and I just think it would be lazy of me to follow in his footsteps just because I think I need to find my own path, and I went on. And He sat there for a moment, a couple of moments of silence passed, and he said, you know, that doesn't exclude God from being allowed to call you. Well, that was a wake-up call for me, but I didn't know it at the moment. It was the beginning of a journey for me. It was a seed planted which allowed me to think and see and understand my world in different ways. Most of my wake-up calls are really retroactive in my understanding. It's only later on that I wake up and say, you know what, I'm in the right place right now. And that really started me on the journey. The road to Emmaus. Weren't our hearts burning inside us? But they didn't know at the time that it was Jesus talking to them as they walked down that road. Yes. But they retroactively look at it and say, yes. wasn't that amazing that right. those, the seeds were planted? That's really good. I think, I think people need to know that it, is a it can be a transformative process, that it may not be the big symbols clashing and all of this coming down. It can be little steps along the way of transformation. Yeah, or that still small voice. Yes, that, exactly. Yeah. Just make sure it's not mustard. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bill, I met my wife in church. Now you would think if I met her in church that I would, I would automatically have the notion that this thing's going to work out. And the idea of us getting married had to grow on me mm -hmm. kind of slowly. And the transformative moment for me came when I was on a trip to Brazil and there for about 16 days. When I came back, I found that my heart had been changed and I was actually ready to ask her to marry me. But God transformed my heart and my mind during that time when I was away. And uh, I was able to think about the rest of my life and put it in proper perspective, I think. But it was a slow process. It wasn't a big crash. It, but a wake-up. It was a wake-up call nonetheless. Thank you for your reflections on wake-up calls, and thank you for being with us on day one.